The Pizza Paradox by John McCloskey Fade in. Interior apartment room. Day. A one-bedroom apartment, simply furnished. Lights are medium dim. There's a large round wood table in the center of the room. On the back wall is a shelf with several framed black and white photographs, an empty vase, a broken statue. In the right corner is a PC at a desk. Sound. Two voices from the hall approaching. The door clicks. The lights turn up bright. Felix Grant and Marta Semple enter. They're both about 40 years old. Okay, now that we're in your apartment, what's this great idea the world must hear? The world? They aren't ready for it. Indiana isn't ready for it. But you, Marta, you're special to me. Your mind always picks up my thoughts. You are more than Indiana, more than the world. Well, that's a lot to carry. Marta drops her purse on the round table. Felix paces a circle around the room. What am I less than? Ha <laughs> ha. I need your opinion on this, Marta. Just yours. For the judgment of one is truer than the verdict of the masses. Depending on the one. He stops pacing and looks at her. You are the one, Marta. I feel dizzy. Your great idea makes me dizzy and I haven't even heard it yet. It might make you sick. You just ate it. I ate the idea? At Joe's. We had a lunch at Joe's Pizza. And we had... Drum roll, please. Pizza. I had a salad. We had a bite of my pizza. I did? He paces over to right. He looks off, dreamily, gazing out a window. Not very memorable, was it? And I know why. Felix whips around and faces her directly. That's my new idea. I'm going to write a book, Marta. You need a hook to write a book, and this idea is the hook. About? He holds up his arms like a symphony conductor. The pizza paradox. The pizza paradox? He pauses, looking at Marta solemnly. The pizza paradox. People fell in love with pizza because it was so delicious, but they only like bad pizza. What? Bad pizza is good? He slowly walks toward her. Hear me out, Marta. Picture this. Because pizza was so delicious, it became the most desired menu item in the world. There's pizza in Siberia. There's pizza in Laos. There's pizza in Kiribati. And you know, at a research station on Antarctica, someone has pulled a thin crust out of an oven and cut it into six slices. Presto! Civilization! Pizza means civilization. He stops and rests his hands on the back of a chair. He gazes at her with a gleam in his eye. Wait. Pizza is adored all over the world. The seductive aroma, the sweetness of tomato and cheese, the promise of oregano. But does pizza really taste good now? That one at Joe's tasted like cardboard. Well, you wanted to go there, Felix. Exactly, to show you. So you'd have my idea inside of you before we even got back. That's why you forced that bite on me. The pizza paradox states, or will state when I write my book, that pizza is no good because it is loved. And it's loved because people think it is good. But it used to be good, and the idea of its goodness was passed down. But the real pizza flavor was too good for the people. They didn't really like it. Marta smiles. She nods, going along good-naturedly. So when they say they like it, they're wrong? Somebody's wrong. We were wrong today at Joe's Pizza. We went there because we thought pizza is good. And the idea of pizza is beautiful. But the reality? Everywhere you go, it's cardboard mush. Why? Because people want mush with a pretty name. They like mush. When anything good comes along, the majority mushifies it in their embrace. So there's no hope for pizza. It started with hope. We're both Americans. I was lucky enough to grow up in the Boston area many years ago. There was a time in Boston where you just couldn't get bad pizza. Every little hole-in-the-wall shop with no tables, whatever, would have heavenly, authentic Italian-American pizza. The point is, there was no shortage of people in America from the 20s to the 80s who knew how to make delicious, good, truly good pizza. And the American way is to form a conglomerate, get bigger with a giant retail chain. So why didn't we get competing chains of restaurants selling truly good pizza? Because the people didn't want it. It's too spicy, they'd say. It tastes funny. They got what they wanted. Pizza Hut, Domino's, and all the other mediocre trash. What happened to derail the pizza dream? Because trash is what people want. They don't really want good pizza. They like the idea of good pizza, and these restaurants always have this succulent close-up photography on the walls. But when it comes to the actual pizza... The owners of these restaurants know that what their customers actually want is an insipid model that looks pretty as a picture and tastes like air and water. Then they can match it up with their own preconceived ideas. Preconceived ideas, like pepperoni? Felix looks upward, oblivious, entranced by his own voice. 
the pizza paradox. Their love ruins it. When the masses love something, forget about it. But the reason they loved it was because it was good. I knew you'd get it, Marta. You see, something happens between the joy of the first encounter and the needs of everyday routine. You can't have a special occasion every day. It would kill you. But you can have the memory of a special occasion. That will keep you alive. So they love pizza for its idea. But the reality is... Really bad. Is all pizza really that bad? Felix ignores her question. He paces the room, gazing into space as if searching for his destiny. This will be the book that puts me over the top, Marta. She sits down at the big round table. There's a book on the table and she slides it close. She looks at the cover. You mean this one will actually get published? You've never been anywhere near the top, Felix. The pizza paradox it will become part of the language. I'll be invited in talk shows where I'll cut a quirky yet urbane figure. Famous thinkers will say, I fear there is a pizza paradox at work here. The president will speak it in a witty aside during the State of the Union speech. To knowing titters. <laughs> That's a knowing titter. He turns back to the table. They will know. I will make them. You're going to make a whole book out of it. I'm not going to be an assistant laundry supervisor all my life. I was made for greater things. He waves at the row of framed photos on the back shelf. He pauses to stare at them. Row of photos. We see pictures of Nietzsche, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Matisse at his easel, a profile drawing of Beethoven, a pale bust of Shakespeare, a photo of Hemingway holding a fish on a boat deck. Then we see the broken statue and the empty vase. These are the greats, Marta. And soon I shall take my rightful place among them. Back to scene. You have a job and you're good at it, Felix. That's a place to be. I do a good job at a bad job. It's like the pizza paradox. I treat it like it's a valuable job, which it isn't. You've got health insurance, Felix. You make enough money to live and the hospital is generous with benefits. Felix stomps his foot on the floor. Chicken feed they throw me to keep me showing up in that smelly laundry room. Row after row of hissing machines fill my nostrils with that rancid steam. Begin flashback. Interior, laundry room, day. A row of front-load washing machines chugging away. They rattle and hiss. Felix rises from behind the machines, frowning. A cloud of vapor blows over his brow. He winces. End flashback. Interior, apartment room, day. I know, but remember before, Felix? You ended up sleeping in a doorway. You got arrested. It took us weeks to find you. You got sick. I was researching a book. I read that thing you keep in the drawer. Felix, that's never going to get published. I know, but now it's different. Now I'm at a higher level, always rising, Marta. Five years of slaving over those washers and I've been taking notes the whole time. I've gotten better. Since I got you that job, you've been so stable. You have gotten better. I talked to Monica in personnel and she says you were the best assistant manager they've ever had in the laundry room. The last one they caught stealing pillows. He turns to her and holds out his arms expansively. Marta. I'm going to soar above that laundry room, way up above all the chatter, to dazzle the world with the pizza paradox. Captains of industry will ask my advice. Sexy new babes will swoon at my feet. But I'll always be loyal to you, Marta. I told your mother that I'd look out for you, Felix. God rest her. God. That's another one. God. We start out believing in a god because the god is good to us, good for us, supposedly. Then, billions of people start believing in the god and it's ruined. The god becomes a cruel authoritarian platitude machine. God is a cardboard jerk. There is an inverse relationship between the justice of a god and the number of adherents. One person believing alone in his own personal god, that is truer, deeper. This has to be written. Felix rushes over to the desk at stage right where his PC sits. He turns it on. He hovers over the PC as it boots up. One person, one God? It's like the first pizza ever was the best pizza ever. When one peasant woman in Campania one day in the 18th century put red sauce and cheese on her bread, that was the best pizza. The pure pizza. And ever since then, pizza has been getting worse and worse as people think it's better and better. Why? Because people ruin everything. There's a moment of silence. Felix looks from the computer to Marta. We expect so much from pizza, and it always lets us down. But we keep on expecting. You're learning, Marta. Felix sits down in front of his PC. So, I need a title. A catchy title. Just Pizza Paradox would sound too... Eager? Felix looks up into space, lost in thought, whispering to himself. 
Hungry? Felix isn't listening to her. He peds parades, um, parades. Uh, no, it sounds like a holiday resort. Zipox? No, sounds too sick. Hmm. Pids docks. How about pids docks? Yes, pids docks. Pids docks. He looks up brightly at Marta. I have a title. He types on the keyboard. Pids docks? That's not even a word. Original thinking always comes with neologism. Pids docks. Sounds like a drug, doesn't it? I'll get them addicted to my idea. If it sounds like a pharmaceutical trade name, it sounds modern, so smart, so efficient. Like the stuff that Trink gave me after you found me. You stop taking it. All it does is weaken me. Turns me into a compliant drone. That shrink, he said to me, Yeah, I get a lot of losers in here. Take one of these extra strength loser pills every day and you'll feel like a winner. Feel like? I am a winner. And I will be. Didn't that drug help you? He pounds his fist on the desk. I need my mind nimble to be really me. It's a pizza paradox again. The drug helped at first, so I thought it would keep helping, so I kept taking it even though it no longer worked. But I thought it worked because everyone said that it worked and all the experts insisted that it was the real thing and... Felix! He stares at Marta. He's panting slightly. Don't you need to get ready for work? I need to get ready to write the book that will put me so high up. I need to make the pizza paradox key to our discourse. You have to work tonight, don't you? It's Thursday. Today is not Thursday, Marta. Today is Freedom Day. Felix? After my shift this morning, I handed in my resignation at the office. I no longer work at Hospital Laundry Central. Marta shoots up from her seat. Oh no, what have you done? I found my true free self. That's what I've done. I need the time to write this book. I can't be tormented with all the heat, the smells, the shouts, the hissing. I hated that job, Marta. That job saved you. I hate the thing that saved me. I pulled a lot of strings to get you that job. So you saved me? Felix stands up. He glares at Marta. He walks towards her. Are you saying that you saved me and the only reason I'm on this planet is because you set it up? So you're kind of like a god who arranges things. A judge who knows what's best for me and you judge me. Do you judge me? Marta retreats in terror. She shakes her head and puts up her hands defensively. She glances behind her to the door. No, Felix, of course not. Then what are you saying, Marta? For you seem to disapprove of the course I've taken. I can talk to Monica in personnel and get you reinstated just like that. I'll tell them it was a big mistake. He turns away from her and steps toward us. But it isn't a mistake. I spent an hour writing that resignation letter. In a way, it is the first page of Pitt's docs. They'll understand, Felix. They'll take you back. But we've got to act quickly. Felix adopts a betrayed tone. He looks at her from the corner of his eye. You don't really understand the pizza paradox, do you? Well, that's the other thing. You see, I may understand it all too well. Felix looks off, nodding at space as if in a trance. When my book comes out, the world will nod sagely at the mere mention of the pizza paradox. Here's the problem. Don't you see that the pizza paradox is self-negating? It carries the seed of its own destruction. Felix walks to the round table, rests his hands on it, and gazes at her. What do you mean? The idea is good now. But when your book is published and you're rich and famous, everyone will abuse the idea. It will be repeated in wrong, simplistic ways that will cheapen it. He pounds the table. No, I won't let that happen. I will police the pizza paradox to keep it pure. Nothing is pure. That's the whole point. My theory of impurity will not be adulterated. By words. Talk upon talk. When you say a thing, you change it. Felix gazes at Marta in silence. So it's inevitable that it be corrupted? Yes, Felix. No. He shakes his head. He paces the room and covers his ears. No, don't try to save me, Marta. That would just ruin it. Don't you see that it will all end in mush? Felix looks at her with terror in his eyes. How could you say that to me? You need to get out of here, Marta. Imagine what you really think about me. I think you are a brilliant thinker. No, you don't. That's a patronizing lie. But the catch is I am a brilliant thinker, although you can never know why. You'll see, when my book is climbing the bestseller lists, then you'll wistfully look back and say, Felix Grant, a transcendent genius whom I struggle to understand with my paltry gifts. Listen, I'll call Monica and personnel and she will intercept the letter. They'll understand. Marta backs toward the door. You don't understand. I need to get some writing done. I'll thank you to leave. He sits down at the PC. I'll make the call now, Felix. You need to get ready for work. Waves her off. 
Don't save me. I am who I am. Marta exits. So, first sentence. Do you believe that pizza will save you? No, too loaded. How about, in the beginning there was a pizza, but then, but then, and now... He types frantically. Fade out. Sound. Felix tapping the keys, breathing heavily. Credits roll. The end.